Okay, so good evening, uh, everyone, and welcome to our general council uh, meeting of April 11th. Uh, first, uh, before I be, uh, begin the our process of agenda, uh, I want to uh, wish everybody, I hope everyone had a great long weekend, Easter weekend. Uh, you know, I know it's uh, always challenging to get time to uh, spend with your family and so forth. So I, I hope everybody had the opportunity to uh, have a nice a sit down meal with your close ones, with your loved ones. I'm going to go to first uh, identifying any media on the line. Hi there, Donna from the Turo Times. David Moses from CKRZ. Hi, Donna. Hi, David. Hey. Now, after joining us this evening, I'm not seeing anyone further. I'll look to the adoption then of the general council agenda of April 11th. We do have a few delegations uh, for this evening. Moved by Audrey, move, Melba. Uh, seconder. Second. Second Melba. by Melba. Thank you, ladies, all in favor. Any opposed? I'm seeing or hearing that motion is carried. Uh, our first delegation this evening, I know this has been a hot topic as we also just uh, celebrated uh, National Languages Day. We have Karen Sandy from our Six Nations Language Commission uh, presenting on overall program updates. Uh, so I'll, uh, without further ado, welcome uh, Sago, Karen. And S5. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, we can. Well, sorry, there, there's some technical. Oh, just one second. Scan out. Okay, scan out, Karen. Scan out, Um, I guess so. Yes. Oh, sorry about that. I just. Sitting here with my group and I'm not the whole um okay. oh there we are okay yes I think we got it and we're supposed to do that great okay and we do have a PowerPoint um I don't know if Brooke could share it we sent it in sure Here, just give me one moment. Thanks for that. There we go. We should be minimizing on the feedback. So you should hear less less echo okay. to everybody in the in the chambers. Again, looks like Tammy's assisting on making sure everyone's on mute. Uh, Sorry, Chief, great. Chief, uh, seeing you go off of mute. Just want to make sure that you're. Yep. Uh, just uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, I just had one item for new business. Can you hear me? Oh, apologies. Yes, we'll add that on, Greg. Great. That was the um, the National Aboriginal Hockey Championship bid. Okay, thanks, Niama, for that, Greg. We'll add that on and discuss after our agenda. Okay, it looks like Brooke has started sharing her screen. I'll uh, look to pass the floor back over to the mission. Okay. Um, are we on? Yep. Okay. <laughs> what happened to our screen? I don't know. I'll see Oh, we can uh, we can see and hear you just fine, uh, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I just a whole, I just a little nervous on how this is working. So, okay, we'll start back at the top. Slide. Oh, she's controlling. Yeah. She's, okay, <laughs> here we go. Okay, scan all everyone. Okay, I'll see that again. Well, why not the dosniha? Okay. And next slide. That us? I don't think so. 
Sorry, Brooke, uh, you're controlling the presentation, so I'll just look to uh, our commission to give uh, Brooke the signal to next slide. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so as you know, our vision our vision statement is in the future, our Haudenosaunee languages will be living languages and chosen as an ordinary means of communication for everyday use. Now, our mission has always been that we will coordinate and facilitate the revitalization of our languages in our territory. Now, we were talking about perhaps updating it and to reflect more of the role we play in terms of promoting and encouraging language uses, language usage. Um, we want to help change the perception in the community. And we see the language community growing, not just by like number of graduates in the programs, but more by the visibility and the usage in the community. So we need the support of other community organizations to help us as well with this role. And uh, we've seen that happening with the different conferences and events that's been happening. So that part is just wonderful. Okay, next slide, Excellent. please, bro. Okay, so our priority has always been proficiency, and that is just getting our people back to a level of language where English is used as an option, so not a requirement for everyday interactions. So this is something where we uh, really want to upscale, I guess, is, is looking at the usage and how we achieve that through our adult learning, our early years learning, and our resource creation. And this is our team here as well as, I don't know if you can see Roja Hio, he's here too. And um, so they can just chime in to any point, any part. And we'll just hold all questions to the end if that's okay. Okay, next slide, please, bro. Okay, so the last time we were here was back in 2020, I believe in January. And we reported then that there were 750 individuals that had been through um, programming, through day immersion, evening and online role, uh, programming. So we had 450 alone that were from day immersion. And from now, there's at least over 500 people. And we're this including the years um, prior to 2014. And it's important because it gets you to the highest level of proficiency. In terms of bilingualism, we from the other institutes, we don't have those figures yet. And we're looking at bilingualism as well in terms of um, how we, we want to really advocate for this and show that the research is creating a healthy community. And in terms of the growing acceptance of usage, we take, take the language market, for example, that was um, launched by a couple of young language learners. So things like those kind of events, you know, it's cool to see the inspiration from the next uh, younger generation. So there's more language through these different activities, which is making it more visible in the community. And um, we see this also on the radio station and social media, you see it more and uh, language marathon that was held last week, things like that. And we help fund the mentorship apprenticeship program as well to help teachers increase their proficiency. Okay, next slide, please, bro. Sure. So, scan notes for where you're going. Uh, okay. So, just for what's new starting this year for us, um, we're going to expand the language resource offerings that we have. So, uh, existing resources that we have, say in Kiuga, switching them to Tuscarora or Onondaga or Mohawk, or vice versa. I think there's a few we only have in uh, Mohawk too. So taking those ones to Kiuga so that uh, sort of the whole range of languages have access to at least some kind of resource. Um, for example, this uh, we have these little uh, flip books that we've called Everyday Language, just with, um, you know, common phrases and that kind of thing. So we're getting that completed in Seneca, which had not previously existed uh, for those booklets. I think we have Mohawk, Kiuga, and Anadaga, right? In Tuscarora too. So we're getting uh, Seneca done for those. So it'll be five. And then I did too. That's getting done too. Mm -hmm. So we'll have them in all six, actually, all six languages uh, for distribution or purchase. Um, there's been a huge increase in local citizens, parents, teachers, and organizations um, stopping by to pick these up because um, we don't have just the flip books. We have a variety of um, sort of like storybooks and coloring books and that kind of thing. For people to come and acquire. So expanding these both across the languages and developing new ones too is on our agenda. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. Um, as well as expanding services and planning. So 
Um, like a lot of places everywhere, COVID did put a hold on the things we were trying to do. Obviously, we couldn't um, be face to face, but thankfully for language, at least, um, it's something that you can, you know, do over uh, Zoom, like we are right now. I'm talking and you can hear me kind of thing. So language you know, can play a part that way. Um, and this is after hiring our planning and development officer, Iska, Cheyenne here. Um, we also have plans to reopen funding for smaller scale community projects, um, which that point is just addressing uh, the fact that for a long time, we've only been able to support the uh, day programs uh, for funding. And then that would sort of eat up the majority of what we've had um, in recent history, but we're getting to the point where we can start to open up potentially new, um, I guess, funding calls or mm -hmm. you would call it. Um, starting sort of this year and then beyond. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> and then a variety of other sort of uh, strategic things and activities that we're looking at. So uh, sort of researching a community language law or this kind of thing that could come into play here at Six Nations, uh, which would be a part of a bigger sort of strategic plan for language here. Um, documentation. So um, we started a project last summer, um, a documentation project, just taking down um, the language of uh, speakers that we still have so that those resources exist um, for learners now and into the future as well. Um, and part of that was encouraging uh, if community members had their own, say, recordings or things that they had made that are sort of sitting in their homes or on their shelves kind of idea they could come to us and we would offer to digitize it for them uh, so that at least it would be preserved for posterity kind of thing versus sitting on a, some, you know, sometimes people still have um, cassette tapes of speakers and that kind of thing. So we just started that project last summer. We have to formalize it more to get, um, like get the terms of how that might work. Um, uh, beefing up our public awareness. So we do have a website, um, but again, over COVID, <laughs> there wasn't a lot happening. So there wasn't a lot going up on it, but definitely making sure that um, lang the languages themselves and the, the usage of them becomes, I guess, renormalized for our community. Um, I think a lot of people have forgotten, unfortunately, that we did used to actually speak. <laughs> We had our own languages that weren't English and weren't any other, you know, language. They were our own. So, um, helping people to remember that here uh, in our community, I think, is is a a big push that we're gonna also start sort of fresh, um, coming out of COVID times. And then last one there is the research. So, um, that one I think is a little bit a little bit more vague, just because it covers a lot of things like standardization of writing and that kind of thing, which. Um, is just a different kind of topic than sort of like, you know, a website and public awareness kind of thing. Um, coming up with our own rating system, I think would be a really great help for the community because currently we use one that's sort of a, uh, what do you, is that word? We, sorry? No, I'm trying not to say stole. We didn't steal it, but um, co-opted, that's the word I'm thinking. We co-opted from a different organization. Um, so that kind of thing where we could say, you know, after X amount of learning, this person can do this, and we would just give a designation for that level of what they can do. Um, but like developed here at Six Nations for our own languages is the idea there. So I hope that was clear. I know that was a lot. Um, the next slide is our last one, basically. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the wrong slide. You want to take this one? Yeah. Hey, um, Scanna, uh, my name is Cheyenne Dockstader. Um, I'm the Planning and Resource, no, Planning and Development Officer. <laughs> um, first time at the meeting, pleasure to meet everybody. Um, so this is the strategic plan update. I was hired um, just a little under a year ago. And um, what I've been basically doing this past year was doing a lot of preliminary research. So a lot of the research was conducted on the relationships and partnerships with other organizations within our community. And then as we 
come to grow from that, we are also making um, outreach to the outside community, which is really nice um, to kind of extend that welcoming that we have here with Hamilton and Brantford. So upon that, um, we've examined potential growth in all these different areas. So um, one of the things we do is we support other language initiatives. And one of those was the community summit, um, the language market, um, the Polytech, I think it was called a uh, language and wellness conference. Um, we had been a part of a lot of these different things and either participated or helped plan. And they were all pretty successful. We had a lot of community members and outside community from different language organizations come and be a part of it as well. So we're making a lot of connections there and um, showing a lot of support for other programs. Um, the main thing that happened this year as well was a language survey. Um, there was a lot of um, interviews via mail, online, um, in person. The most important thing I had gotten from them was 100% agreed that they are interested in learning and studying the language. And uh, we are very interested in enhancing what we already know works and incorporating um, innovative ideas. So one of those ideas is currently we are working um, in partnership with Brock University and a uh, other community member from here who is also a um, Gowaneo, um, Gowaneo school graduate is um, virtual reality project where we're gonna bring Gayokono to virtual reality for our students here and it can be young students, older students and adults and other learners. So those are some of the things we have and we're trying to be more innovative and trying to bring more of a updated learning to our languages here at Six Nations. Okay. Kim, did you wanna address this language market thing or no? Okay. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so, okay, yeah. so now, uh, uh, to each. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. I just want to make sure. Yep. Sure that everyone could hear me okay yeah okay thumbs up i just want to say now i i do have a couple questions uh at all but just before uh we begin those i'm going to go over to uh, counselor audrey uh who has hand raised hello everyone and thank you thank you for all the fine work that you're doing we really appreciate it lifelong learning is is basically doing the same thing only at the elementary level JK to grade 12 right now, and we will be getting into the uh, early years as well as post-secondary, as well as um, um, adult learning as well. So um, we hear what you're saying, and hopefully we can work together on this. My question is, um, I need more clarification, please, on what you call the um, law for language. What does that entail and why is it needed? Okay, well, I guess it may be another word for, for that would be just like a language policy. I don't know if you have seen the one that's in Ganawagi right now, but that's just basically sort of saying the community's values language and we collectively are working to revitalize it. Like it can be whatever we want it to be, you know, just something that we're all going to buy in for really. Um, I don't know if law is the right word, but that's just kind of what could be policy for that matter. Yeah. It's just I something that we collectively come up with. That's what I think that um, people will will take a lot of notice to it, and you may get pushback from the word lo using law there. Yeah, it doesn't language have to be is that. free, <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah, trying to think of something that better cat uh, represents what you're doing. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Well. Okay. Thanks. Excuse me. Thanks, uh, Audrey for your question um looking to any further questions or comments uh for the commission i just really quickly uh just uh, uh while anyone is is looking to further ask question or comment i wanted to ask in relation to what audrey was saying as well i mean i think it's still uh, important that go about as we know um you know what happened uh, with the class action that was something that i wanted to talk with the commission about anyways in terms of the latest class action uh really the 
council, uh, you know, because there's there was there wasn't 634 nations. I'll tell you that much that actually opted in. Uh, in terms of the the national uh, class action on la lost languages, my question to you is, and, and again around building out that strategy uh, and what that looks like, because. Just as a community, what that looks like, um, and that's maybe I'm not sure if you, uh, if the commission has had time or had opportunity to discuss around, you know, the legalities of what that class action uh, spoke of. Um, just wanting to know on a little bit of points on those. Yeah, um, I'm aware of it as I sit on that um, leadership committee on language. And I know Six Nations was not a part of it, as many communities were not a part of it. And um, but collectively as a group, we haven't had an opportunity to sort of look at what is currently there with that um, lawsuit. So it's certainly something we could, um, you know, entertain. Or yeah, I think. To... Yeah, sorry, okay. Karen. I I think it might be uh, it might be best to start. To We cut out. It's cutting out. Oh, my apologies. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, the reason I ask uh, in that question is because I think we need to really start to put our minds together uh, on what that actually looks like, um, and I think that's something uh, again that is going to need as much participation as a community in that collective. And what that looks like. Right. Uh, Sherry Lynn? Um, I'm just wondering where can myself and others get that pocketbook um, with the languages and how much are they? Okay, we have them right at the commission office, which is 50 Generations Drive at the United Business Park. Now, if we get them sponsored, we tr give them away. Like is, sometimes we do get folks, um, organizations that sponsor it. Otherwise, we have to just we just try to sell them at cost of our printing, which is around four dollars each. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Sherry Lynn. Are there any further questions or comments? Okay, I'm not seeing uh, or hearing any. Uh, I will then look to uh, motion uh, mover, as you see, recommendation 4-1 to accept uh, the program update from our Six Nations Language Commission as information. I see Audrey, is there a seconder? I'll second it, Melba. I'll second it, Melba. Seconded by Melba. And do do apologize. I I am having some troubles with internet right now, connectivity, but it's been moved and seconded. Are there any further questions or comments? And maybe just a note, uh, Karen and Language Commission team, I I will uh, reach back out to you on the legality side of that of those discussions because I think it's important uh, that we uh, see through what the legal realms we have available, not necessarily partake, uh, you know, related to particularly the uh, class action case, uh, you know, we've already made our decision there, but I think there's still opportunity um, to put our minds together on what we can do in the legal realm. Okay, seeing or hearing uh, no further questions or comments, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Uh, seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Again, do want to say nyawa to each of you uh, for the work that you do on the commission. Again, uh, the work does not go unnoticed. And I know uh, we have to do our best uh, and continue to do our best as a collective to uh, make sure uh, that we're continuing to put our language uh, and culture as, as the priority. So nyawa for each of your work and look forward to, uh, to our next uh, engagement and conversation. Okay, that does complete the Language Commission. Again, Nyawa for joining us this evening. Uh, we do have our next uh, delegation in, I believe. I'm not sure if she's in the waiting room, if Brooke can confirm uh, that. Jackie Paulus. Oh, I do see her online. 
Uh, Jackie is uh, the Community Health Survey Project Manager within uh, Six Nations Health Services. So this looks like uh, an ethics. I'll pass uh, the floor and welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, Jackie. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I have a- oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Jackie, just really quickly. I see Audrey has her hand raised, Audrey. Oh, sorry, Audrey, you're on mute. <laughs> Mark, once again, I was almost done. <laughs> Welcome, Jackie and you. <laughs> uh, I would like to declare a conflict of interest. You want to put me out? Okay. That's fine. Now for that, Audrey, uh, Brooke, if you can put Audrey into the waiting room uh, and we'll uh, pass the floor back over to yourself, uh, Jackie Scano. Say good. Welcome. Hi. Um, I do have a PowerPoint presentation. If I could share my screen, I can go through that with you. Sure, you should you should have access to, uh, okay. on your share screen. Okay. You can see it. Yes. Sorry, I can't hear anyone. Oh, apologies. Yes, we can see it. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so um, I am the project manager for the Community Health Survey, um, which we have renamed to the Ongoi Health Check-In um, for various reasons. Um, to make it more Haudenosaunee, uh, the word survey has uh, negative connotations for many people. So we thought we would make it a little bit more uh, friendly and familiar. So we are preparing to do a pilot study uh, before we roll out the community-wide survey. So the team currently working on the survey are, are myself as the project manager, Tristan Bonberry, uh, who's the project coordinator, Jane Kevin Hancock, who's the community engagement coordinator. And um, as an advisor is uh, Sarah Curley-Smith. Uh, she was integral in beginning this project uh, before the rest of the, the team were hired. So what is the Community Health Survey? It's, um, it's basically a health questionnaire. Uh, it will be done on a tablet or on a computer. It's been designed by us, by Six Nations, uh, for Six Nations, and it's intended to assess the current health status of the community. Um, and that the community may include anybody who lives on Six Nations, anyone registered to Six Nations, regardless of where they live, and they must be 16 years of age or older. Uh, we include 16-year-olds because often 16-year-olds are facing very adult problems like pregnancy or addictions and things like that. So why are we doing a survey? Well, we believe that the survey uh, can help us to describe uh, health conditions that are prevalent in the community. Uh, they can help us to identify other factors that may influence health. Uh, it can provide data or evidence for funding bodies. It can help us in planning, for example, long-term care needs or dialysis needs or doctors. Uh, it can also help us to improve our services by des describing whether or not we have access to healthcare or to describing gaps in services. There are other health surveys that have been done. Um, the Canadian government uh, does a uh, community health survey, and I think they actually call it the community health survey, which is why we changed the name to differentiate it from that one. Um, and it's usually done with the census. Um, they do not survey on reserve households anywhere in Canada. Um, they do sometimes capture Indigenous households uh, that are in cities. Six Nations does not participate in this survey. Uh, the regional health survey is run by First Nations Information Governance Centre. And Six Nations also does not participate in this survey. And neither of these surveys really ask the kinds of questions that our community needs answered, the kind of questions that we want answered. So why do we need our own survey? We know that Indigenous people have higher rates of chronic disease and a shorter lifespan than other Canadians, than Canadians. And we don't really have all the information that we need to make a, make a change in, the, in these statistics. So our survey asks questions about all kinds of things, including individual health status and things like diet and exercise, those individual factors um, and behaviors. But there are other factors that are important, 
in assessing health. And it's things like housing and education, access to clean water and good food, access to health care. And then there are other things that um, are sort of, I don't know, structural or societal problems, um, uh, results of colonization, for example, um, residential schools, trauma, loss of language and culture, social connections. So those are some of the things that we're going to be asking questions about in our survey. And we made it Six Nations specific. Um, we uh, collaborated with a lot of people uh, in the ethics package. There's a list of, of dozens of uh, uh, people and organizations that we collaborated with in designing this, this survey. So it's designed by community members. It will be administered by us, by community members. We're intending to hire uh, local research assistants um, and we will train them if we have to. Um, it asks questions that are specific to Haudenosaunee culture and our history. And it's also designed to be very respectful, um, giving people the option of prefer not to answer. Some of those questions can be very sensitive and we're taking sort of a trauma informed approach to, uh, to not cause harm or, or anxiety in anybody. So uh, we're being very careful about that. Uh, we will be using software. So uh, like I said, it will be an electronic survey. Um, so it will be cloud-based. It will be securely held, it's digital, uh, probably will be using laptops. So it will be password protected and encrypted and they will have backup copies and we will be controlling, controlling access. Um, uh, it will be very limited access and only with uh, proper procedures and permissions. So we're beginning with a pilot study. Um, so the, the larger study is intended to, to try and survey maybe a thousand people from the community like as a representative sample. But for this pilot study, we're, we're choosing a, a subset of the population. And, uh, and the purpose of doing this is to sort of test our procedures, uh, to test the survey questions to make sure that it's not too long or the questions are too sensitive or ambiguous, things like that. Um, so we may be revising the questions after this. Um, we'll be streamlining our procedures. Uh, we'll also be making partnerships with our other organizations. So we um, are hoping to have uh, partners in Brantford and Hamilton because we know that we have large uh, populations there. And we're targeting a start date of May 2023. That might be uh, a little optimistic, but it'll be close to that, I hope. So this subpopulation that we're uh, targeting is uh, through collaboration at health services. Um, uh, health services and the crisis hub have identified this population that they call the hidden homeless. So we don't really know how many people are experiencing or have experienced homelessness. Um, so we're kind of defining it as, as being unstably housed in the last 12 months. So that could be people who are living in transitional housing. So they're waiting for more permanent housing or they may be in emergency shelters or they could just be staying temporarily with friends or family, which is often called couch surfing or they could be uh, living on the streets. Um, so the eligibility for this pilot study is you must be 16 or older, um, you must have experienced unstable housing in the past 12 months, and you live on Six Nations, or all of those, and you're a band member who lives off Six Nations. We're doing something called respondent-driven sampling. Um, it's a little on the technical side, maybe beyond what you need, but it, it's basically we're encouraging uh, participants to recruit other people, people that they know um, who also meet the eligibility requirements. Um, so we're hoping as this, this uh, image shows that one person will recruit three and each of those people will recruit three and so on. Um, so uh, the group at uh, Mental Health and Addictions are intending to provide us with some uh, people who they think would be good seeds. So we're calling calling them seeds. These are the people who will start the, the ball rolling. They'll they'll uh, they'll be the first ones and then they will they will try and recruit people that they know. 
Um, and as I said before, we'll be reaching out to organizations in Brentford and Hamilton for these same uh, seed suggestions. The survey is quite long, it's, it's quite in depth. Um, we're trying to cover a lot of things um, and it will take approximately an hour and a half to two hours, uh, depending on the individual. We tested it on a number of people at health services and it's the, the time has ranged from like less than an hour to an hour and a half to more than two hours uh, for people who are, who are particularly chatty or have a lot to say. Um, as a form of reciprocity because this is a large time commitment for people. Uh, we are giving incentives of $50 gift cards for completing the survey and an additional $10 gift card for recruiting someone else who can uh, completes the survey. Um, we're doing a, a, a sort of trauma-informed non-coercive kind of approach so that if there are any questions that anyone is uncomfortable answering, they do not have to answer them. They will be um, able to withdraw from the study without penalty if they choose. Um, they will also be offered information or they will be connected with health services if, uh, if it's found that they are in need. Uh, oh, and the sites that we're choosing are, we're hopefully choosing sites that will be familiar um, to our participants. So uh, we've been offered an office at Mental Health and Addictions and we're hoping to have similar situations in Brantford and Hamilton. We intend to be hiring research assistants for this, for this pilot project. We may only hire one depending on how, uh, how busy it gets. Uh, and we're prioritizing hiring for the com from the community uh, with mentorship and capacity building in mind. Uh, we'll be training our uh, our staff in OCAP training, the uh, ownership control, access and possession of data uh, in TCPS2, which is an ethics certification. We'll be teaching them about duty to report in, in case they are um, become aware of, of the participant maybe being uh, a, a danger to themselves or to others. And we're also looking at de-stressing exercises in case someone is, is sort of triggered by um, the question. And like I said, we say, we have changed the name from the Community Health Survey to the Ongwe Hongwe Health Check-in Six Nations. Uh, we're making sure that we add Six Nations because we're aware that there are other Ongwe Hongwe communities. And we intend to translate it into all six languages. We actually have the translations, but we need the keyboard to, to write them properly. And that's it. Any questions? Okay. Nyawa, uh, Jackie, for walking us through uh, your presentation. If I could just maybe get you to uh, stop your share screen, and I'll look uh, to the floor for any further questions or comments. I know there is uh, one uh, question coming in from community, um, and it reads, is it possible to have environmental causes of health included uh, where it would look into the past and current environmental concerns in their area that may be uh, impacting their health. It could also help with other studies or at the very least help with tracking. So that was it uh, from community. Yeah, well, we, we are trying to do that. We can't ask every every possible question, but we are asking about uh, access to, to water. We're asking about... Um, air quality at home, whether there were concerns there. Um, yeah, uh, if water has been tested, is, is there something specific or? Um, I think it was this more general generalization in terms of environmental impacts. Yeah, I, I don't think that we're not going in and, uh, you know, asking for soil samples and things like that, but um, we, we are trying to ask that as much as we can. Um, Given that you know some people will not know us, but particularly in the um, in the in the pilot study, because they may be homeless, they may not have uh, information about their own land or or their environment in that respect. Uh, Jackie, uh, I seen Helen had her hand raised. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> well, I guess my only concern is the digital 
because we have so many people in our community that don't have computers or iPads and don't have internet. Um, if they have internet, it's pretty sketchy. So I just have a concern with that if that's the only way it's being done. How are you going to deal with the ones that can't participate because they don't have what's needed? Okay, uh, I, there's something that I omitted in my slide. Uh, all of these surveys will be done face to face. So we uh, we will have the computer in front of us. So we will be entering the data. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so our research assistants will go to Brantford. Um, for example, if someone has transportation issues, we also have um, permission to uh, use a, a vehicle if we need to go and pick some up and drive them to a, an appointment to do a survey. Um, and we also decided that we wanted this to be face to face so that we could check in with with uh, the people who are completing the survey in case they do need services or if they need a break. Um, we we want to be able to see them and, and okay. respond to them. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks, Nella, for that. Uh, Helen, are there any further questions or comments for Jackie? Oh, I see Darren has his hand raised. Over to you, Darren. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jackie. I really appreciate the presentation. Uh, I think your methodology is sound. It's, it's very good. Uh, I think in terms of a thousand, I think that's, that's a, a high number. Um, just from my, my past experience and doing surveys, uh, it's it's going to be hard to attain that. I but I do I do think the incentives are are good. My only question was in terms of how you're driving the sample size. Is there a checkpoint in terms of representation geographically within the community as well? I think sometimes that's that's overlooked. Um, just in terms of access to services, uh, some of the questions that you raised in terms of symptomatic or framework contributors to health. Uh, I think those are really good, but just in terms of that, if there's, is, there, is there some point in the methodology where you you do a checkpoint on that? That was my only question. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, for the pilot study, we really don't know what the number is. Um, that's that's part of what we're trying to do is try and find out what, what how big the problem is, how pervasive it is in 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 all the, all three of these communities. So we don't know um, for the pilot study. And for the larger study, we're in con we're in communication and getting advice from statisticians and uh, academics who have used this process um, in Toronto and Hamilton and Winnipeg and London and so on. So we are getting advice from them um, from a statistical point of view. Um, and yeah, we as we recruit people, uh, we will be asking how they how they. Um, how they were referred. So how do you know the person who referred you to this study? So that'll give us an indication of what that network is that, that connected them. So it may be like, is it church that connect that, those people or lacrosse, they're on the same team or we work together or something like that. So that will give us sort of an indication of whether or not we're getting uh, people from different sort of pockets of the reserve. Um, I was involved with the, an ongoing study, the COVID community study, um, which is about to wrap up. And we managed to recruit, I forget the exact number, but it's in the neighborhood of 750 people for that study. So I don't think that a thousand is, um, is, is that much of a reach. Um, and, and the thing that we were uh, informed of from other um, groups that have done this kind of work is that because it was done by a First Nations organization and for First Nations people, like it had no government involvement. Uh, the participants were more willing to help out because they felt a, a sense of ownership of it. And they, um, they, I don't know, felt some pride in it and they felt like they were contributing. So I'm, I'm very uh, hopeful, <laughs> optimistic that we will have the same. Good, good luck. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Darren? Yeah, it does. Thanks, Jackie. I, I just know that from experience, it's been a bit of a struggle to get beyond 500. But uh, I appreciate that. And, and the strategies you're employing makes sense to me. Thanks. Danielle, uh, for that, uh, Darren uh, and Jackie, I see Greg has his hand raised. 
Yeah, hi, um, hi, Jackie. Yeah, it's a good initiative. It seems like it's going to give uh, bear out some good um, information. Now, are you in the in the final study? Are you going to um, extrapolate data and compare it to uh, indigenous versus non-indigenous with the same housing situations? Is that is that the overall goal to to do a comparative study in the end and to see where there are differences or needs that can be addressed? Uh, yeah, we are we are designing the survey so that it it is compatible and comparable with the regional health survey and the Canadian Community Health Survey. So we're collecting some of the same data, but we're also collecting the data that that uh, people that Six Nations want. So yeah, it will be comparable. Um, that's not the only goal, but it's one of the goals. So sure. just to follow up, Chief. Um, so then we can use uh, from a political aspect, we can use that information. Um, to, to address the needs and look for other areas of funding, look for um, target areas where the government should be targeting. And that uh, in the long run, it may be a very uh, strong political tool for us uh, to address some of our needs. Right, that's exactly what, to, what we're looking at. We understand that funding bodies, they want, they want this evidence, they want data, right? So this is, this is us getting data to show them uh, what the needs are, what the gaps are. Um, and it'll also be a good thing for us to actually show that we're making progress. So this is not going to be just a one-off thing. We anticipate that we'll do it over and over again over, I don't know, maybe the course of five or 10 years, it'll be repeated. And then maybe maybe that will be some proof to show that here and here's an initiative that we did and look, we have less diabetes or we have less obesity or we have more employment or I don't know, something like that. That's That's kind of how we're hoping to use this in the future too. Great, thank you. Thank you. I think I think you uh, you hit the the nail on the head, uh, Greg. Uh, just on on your comments, I think it's it's you know this is something I think even with Nathan and Michelle has has been working on in terms of the streamlining of ethic approval, uh, or rather ethic applications to see rather you know what is it that we can uh, really use as our political um, advocacy, uh, much like what you've just mentioned, Greg, in terms of uh, you know the then drive out what our plan looks like and so forth so do appreciate that last question and comment are there any further questions or comments for jackie and her application or presentation okay i'm not seeing or hearing on any at this point in time uh, i will look for a mover and secondary on recommendation 42 where the therefore be it resolved that the elected council approve the ethics application entitled Ongahoi Health Check-in Six Nations. Is there a mover and seconder to that effect? Moved by Greg, seconder. A second call for a seconder on the motion. I'll second that chief. Seconded by Kiri. And finally, any final questions or comments? Hate seeing or hearing none then, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, motion to waive second reading. Yeah, go, go ahead, Chief. Oh, I'll, second, moved, I'll by, second that. Moved by Greg, seconded by Kerry to waive second reading. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. So Nyawa, Jackie, for joining us uh, this evening and looking forward to uh, the, the next steps in your work. Great, Nyawa, good night. Have a great evening. Okay, Council, I do apologize uh, having some internet connectivity issues, but uh, our next item is under our uh, SEED uh, programs, the Science, Employment, Education and Development Committee. I believe we have Rebecca Jameson on the line. For any further questions or comments, there are two recommendations, both 4.3 as well as 4.4. 
So the first one again is to approve the individuals um, to be Six Nations reps on the seed committee. The list is as follows. Are there any questions, comments? Not sure if Becky, if you have anything that you would like to add? No, no thanks, Chief. Okay, looking to any further questions or comments on recommendation 4.3, and if not, uh, looking to a mover in seconder. Move, Chief. Again, this is for, okay, thank you. Uh, Audrey, seconder? I'll second it, Chief. Seconded by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, recommendation 4-4. Four, four. Again, these, this is for the, the therefore be it resolved uh, that our council accept as information the allocation of 12 uh, 2022 seed scholarships for Six Nations, which have been uh, completed, and that the six successful applicants be recognized for their accomplishments. Looking to any questions or comments on recommendation 4 4, and if not, looking to a mover and seconder. Moved by Audrey, seconder. Second, second call for the seconder, Greg. Are there any further final questions or comments? It's pretty straightforward. Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading on the two previous motions. Moved by Audrey, seconder. Second by Greg. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing that motion is carried. Okay, now uh, uh, Becky for joining us uh, this evening. It was pretty straightforward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Okay, Council, I'm going to continue moving along the agenda here. Our next item is the adoption of the General Council minutes of March 28th. Moved by Nathan, seconded by Helen. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the minutes? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, the next item, council and reports, we do, there's one, Helen, I'm not sure, I know Helen had, had some issues we didn't get, I'm not sure if we got your book yet, back yet. <laughs> we were, as we know, we were, uh, council knows we were all in Ottawa last week. However, we'll also be developing, there was a number of resolutions and so forth. So we have that package forthcoming to council as well. So maybe I'll just pass it over to Helen for any of her thoughts. Yeah, I can do brief, briefly. Uh, first of all, I was quite disappointed in the AFL because everything was mostly in French. <laughs> um, they, they never had the resolutions up on the board, on the screens or nothing. All they had was the French ones up there. So I, I, I really got, I was disappointed because, you know, if you don't have the resolutions, you don't get to read them. And if it's all just in French, then you know, there was a lot, probably a lot of people that didn't really know what was going on. I don't know why it was like that. It normally isn't like that, but it was really French centered this time. Anyway, um, another thing, like I attended the, the leadership council on the Sunday night Mark uh, for Mark, and they discussed different things. It was in camp. The leadership was in camera, so I can't really say what they were talking about, but there was big discussion on different things, and it was mainly around the event. Um, then, the, then when I went to the the um, caucus, I was feeling lost because a lot of some of the issues that there was being discussed, I I didn't know a whole lot about it. Council, for example, they were talking about the 
uh, reviewing and changing the 65 welfare agreement. Well, we've never talked about that at, here at council. So I wasn't that up to in the loop as to what they were doing. I remember Chief Mentor, Bill Mentor, and Willington Stoss and Steve Williams, they always fought against the feds wanting to change the 65 welfare agreement. But when I went to the uh, caucus meeting, the, the health directors for the Chiefs of Ontario thought it was great news because they were going <laughs> to sit down and co develop a new health welfare agreement. So I was really kind of confused about that. The feds have been trying to change that thing for years. They're trying to get out of it. They want to stick us onto Ontario for welfare. So I was a bit concerned about that because I don't know whose responsibility it was to bring it to us, whether it was Sandy Porter as the director of um, welfare or whether it's Arliss as the director of social, because we're not having committees anymore. We're not getting up to speed on all of these different issues that are taking place. So Sorry, it's just confusing. The health fun. legislation as well. I. I felt kind of lost on that because we haven't really talked about that either and um, different things. I, but I learned a lot. So that was the important thing. And then uh, the actual assembly itself, and, and, and there was a big issue with education because the AFN Education Committee is trying to change the formula. There was a big discussion on that. That went on for two, almost two days. Thankfully, it, it never got supported. Um, Ontario contingent of Ontario, and Mark can probably tell you about that. The Ontario Chiefs all stood up and uh, opposed that resolution. Um, and the child welfare, of course, that was the big one, the announcement. But I, I found out in a caucus meeting, there's a lot of things going on with child welfare that we're not aware of either, besides the compensation part of it. So I, I was wondering, if maybe Arla shouldn't be keeping us informed as to what's going on. Um, and what was the other big one they talked about was health and education and child welfare. I think those were the main one that was being discussed. Oh, and Canada's action plan um, regarding the uh, UNDRIP. That was a big one too. Big discussion about that one. But it was hard because like when they put a, when they do a resolution, there were so many amendments to it that it's really hard to keep up if it's not on a screen where you can see it. So I know a lot, of, and I, there was other, a couple other chiefs complaining about that as well. But that was a big discussion that, that uh, Action Canada's action plan. So those were the main ones they talked about. And, uh, Mark can let me know what he was doing. He posed some of the, he um, spoke against some of the resolutions they had. And the, the, the biggest gist of the whole, seemed to be the whole resolution was, uh, the conference was passing all of these resolutions that were supposed to be passed the last conference. There was a whole list of them that never got passed in July. So they were all brought to this one to try and get them through and they were struggling to get them through. So then they started doing these omnibus resolutions. They put four or five resolutions in, under the one um, resolution. So they tried to do it that way. So it, it was, but I learned a lot and I'm glad I went. Okay, thanks, uh, Nyawa and Helen, for your update. And again, there'll be more of a, a detailed update forthcoming from from our office. Helen uh, touched a little bit on on the on basically what the gist was of the the kind of um, the you know the heavier topics that that we discussed. Um, that I know Nathan just to clarify. I know Nathan has brought, and this is something that we've seen uh, in terms of the um, sixty five uh, the welfare sixty five agreement. I know there's been updates forthcoming on the, on that front uh, to start to get us in the mindset of what the what does it look like in the next steps. So that's now get got uh, to um, uh, us as full council. And I know our list and thanks to that uh, for that. Tammy is 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 planning to come, and I know she's been coming to update us on the the bigger file itself of 
from child welfare because there was uh, obviously a lot of work uh, done and finally passed on behalf of you know Blackstock who had issues with uh, you know a group of of uh, children basically being left out of the original agreement that was looked to be being approved last year. Um, there was back and forth. So that now has gotten the negotiations to the point of where we passed it at this last assembly. But I think there was, you know, the, the, the big, I think the biggest takeaway from this assembly is that action plan is the UNDRA and what that looks like. Because we know Canada is 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 moving full force. They're right now in phase two of engagement where they'll need obviously, uh, you know, voices collected on what that action plan looks like and when it's on, you know, on the ground within communities. And so that's something that our office is, is working on to uh, submit to our feedback uh, on phase two of UNDRA and what that looks like. So there, that was the main takeaway from for me. Again, it's a, and we'll get this all sent out to council for your own perusal and your own research. It's about a 40 page, 45 page document uh, the, that basically outlines the sector and, and as well as who and what ministry it falls under. Uh, and so there's a lot of work happening uh, on uh, obviously Indigenous services side as well as Miller side. Crown relations. There's, uh, you know, there's there's things that we need to flag, and really, what I liked about it is, is um, I, I believe JFK, Sarah Mainville did uh, their own analysis on uh, Andra itself, and so I wouldn't even mind. Actually, we had a discussion of getting uh, that analysis into council to to kind of start and set our minds around what that looks like and the impacts to us uh, specifically at Six Nations. Uh, and so that's something that's on the to do list to get in front of Council so that we can again start to put our minds together of developing our own analysis of this under and what that looks like. Um, so there's opportunity, I think, still uh, there's uh, yes and on the education piece, obviously the Ontario region was getting cut, I think it was totaled about a third of the funding uh, of the original dollars that we've already seen and so that was a huge huge um, you know flag for Ontario chiefs and so that was something that is coming back at the next uh, assembly so that we can figure that out. They tried to go back and forth with amendments, however, could not get to an agreement. And so that was where, uh, again, there was no issue with new funding coming through from the Ontario region. It's to do with the existing funding that they were trying to cut. And so that was the main issue. Uh, and it ultimately, you know, the I think one of the main, main goals, or rather not goals, main points uh, on the education front was, you know, as we're sitting here uh, region to region arguing over peanuts, uh, that's something that we need to further discuss with the federal government is, you know, looking at why you're already trying to cut an area that is already underfunded, and yet we're all looking at different regions and why regions are getting more than others. And so that's something uh, that I thought was um, really interesting is why we're as regions uh, now kind of subject against each other when yet it's peanuts to begin with. Uh, so that's uh, and that was something from uh, Chief Chief Dabowski who raised that good point. Uh, but nonetheless, again, this um, we will be having uh, her come in uh, to uh, Council Sarah Mainville to kind of go over and get our mindset into uh, submitting our our plans or rather our input for Phase Two of Andra and what that looks like. Uh, so that's uh, that's something that's going to happen quite quickly, to be honest. But other than that, you'll see a more detailed report come forward on the specific resolutions. There was roughly about 30, 34 resolutions, uh, as well as um, a few uh, emergency resolutions, and as well as we'll look into the omnibus packages. That was also kind of an, an omnibus always comes in with issues because they're trying to move as quickly as they, they can by putting three, four, five resolutions together. But Say, for example, some chiefs are okay with two of those omnibus packages resolutions, but have issues with three. So, you know, it's, it's that that is always a challenge, I think, in assemblies uh, when going to omnibus uh, packages. Uh, Sherry Lynn? Um, yeah, I guess also, too, for this child welfare, um, this human rights uh, court case that's been government just did billions of dollars to. I guess, yeah. <clears throat> what, when will that information be going out to the community? I know it's just kind of um, got passed and stuff, but at least to, to, to start letting them know what it's about, 
um, who yeah. could be, who's eligible, those kinds of things. So um, we're not behind the eight ball and everybody's aware of um, it and who can be eligible for it because it's huge. It's very huge. So yes, um, just to have the information out, thanks. Yes, uh, so that's a good point, uh, Shirley. And in fact, again, we're having Arliss come into our next political liaison to really start to, because you know, we our updates from Arliss has, has always been, you know, getting to this point of approval of chiefs and assembly. So now that we're, you know, past that point, it's now getting down to the ground on the ground and what that looks like. So uh, we'll look to make sure Arliss uh, has that clear direction in making sure uh, Monday's political liaison that, uh, you know, it's starting to get br broken down and communicated to to community. Yeah and, yeah, and just a follow up, I guess, to that, um, that and um, also be put, can it be put in our um, council newsletters, um, even, you know, in the papers, those kinds of things to uh, just get people thinking and aware of the settlement. Yes, totally agree. So we'll, we'll start to work on those pieces. In fact, community can start and uh, actually see in our public forum of political liaison. Uh, Helen? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Um, it's not going to, they talked about, because somebody had stood up and asked that question is when can it, when is it going to start? Can people start applying for it? And um, They said it was going to be a while yet because there's certain things that have to get done. There's something else that has to get approved by the legislation or something and different things like that. And, 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 um, it sounds to me like the application is going to be really extensive. And I'm, if I remember correctly, they said that you could hire, they were going to hire people to help with the application. They, they, they call uh, like a navigator type person or something, because it sounds like the application is really extensive. So those kinds of things they were talking about, but they're all coming later. So. That's the important part, I think, to let people know is that the money's not going to come next month. It's going to be a while yet before anybody starts getting any money. Yeah, that's definitely a good point. And I think just uh, one of those other points, I know Helen, uh, just on the application, they're, they want to make sure that it's as simplified as possible. So it's not going to, you know, obviously what we've seen, because I know it was going back and forth of the extensiveness of some of the other applica applications like day school or residential school or the class actions. So they're, they're doing their best to, to work on what that looks like. But do you agree with Helen's point of, you know, it's not going to be tomorrow or next month, but yet I think to share Lynn's point, we can at least start to get out to community so that we can prep for what's next. And so that's something that we'll have our list um, look to uh, a full-on comms plan on what this looks like. Are there any further questions or comments for Helen's verbal update? Again, there'll be a more detailed written update for full council on the resolutions and that were uh, either abstained uh, or uh, agreed upon or as, uh, as, as well opposed. Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing that. I'll look to a mover to accept Helen's verbal update of the Special Chiefs Assembly. Moved by Audrey, seconder. I'll second it, Melba. Seconded by Melba, second it, Melba. all in favor. Any opposed? Seeing or hearing on motion is carried. So there's a lot uh, coming uh, forward council, you'll start to see, and especially under the UNDRA plan. And uh, so Sarah Mainville, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be reaching out uh, to have her in again to start to get our, our mindset around that as well as the whole 65 uh, uh, welfare uh, agreement uh, as well as this uh, the, the latest with the child welfare so there's there's a lot that came out of this assembly so you're going to start to see where that politically you know puts us as well because we did have opportunity to have um you know uh, really one-on-ones -on -ones, uh, with patty haidu as well as minister mark miller uh, Lametti was there so there's Mendocino. So there's a number, a number of, of, of individuals who were there that we at least, you know, at the bare minimum uh, got to say, you know, when when do we expect a meeting and so forth to further along our uh, issues and matters back home here. So uh, you'll, you'll start to see that those reports come through in the next uh, week or so. Um, that being said, I'll pass the floor over and at this point to Greg for his new business item. 
Yeah, can you hear me, Steve? Yes, yes, we okay. could hear you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was just, uh, can, just to give an update on that National Aboriginal Hockey Championship that um, they're putting a bid in for Niagara Falls. I just wanted to give an update. A written report will come in the next week or two as when the final decision is made. Um, it was quite a nice day. Uh, we started off with an opening ceremony and uh, we burned tobacco and it was quite nice. We had some guests uh, from the uh, Aboriginal sports circle, a fellow by the name of Jeff Spencer, uh, Mistassny. He's from Mistassny, Quebec that will make the selection. And they did appreciate Chief, your letter of support that was sent and some of the ideas that you had in that in that letter. And I think it's a it's a very good opportunity for us to be involved, um, even even if for our young people to be involved, even if you're not on the ice or you you are on the ice, it's it's hockey at a very high level. Uh, I've attended it uh, that championship several times, and as you know, Chief, we have uh, Brandon Mentor, one of our First Nation members. He participated in that, and uh, these are really stepping stones for our youth to um, proceed on and further. Uh, other endeavors, not only just hockey. Um, and as you know, he, I think oh, you were at the game, Chief, when he scored the uh, the winner in overtime, I believe, a couple of weeks ago against Toronto. So he is a very uh, prolific uh, hockey player, and I, we're very proud of him to be from Six Nations. We also have a, a female member, too, has played in this tournament uh, three times uh, in this national championship. And uh, <clears throat> she went on to play... Um, uh, for Team Canada in U18, U22, as well as uh, onto university. And now she's graduated medical school and now is in a surgery program at, at Western. So these, um, these, these endeavors for our, for our youth are, are, you know, they're stepping stones for, for some of our high level athletes. And then they can use it to find and go on into education or they can stay in the sport like Brandon did, or they can go on to go on to university. And there, there are quite a few scouts that are there uh, that are looking at, because the, the native teams are very, very good, very high level, both female and male. We did tour the, we did tour the Gale Center, which is, we'll be housing it. And we also had a nice tour of the Niagara Parks power station. And they had an emphasis on the importance of water and how the indigenous uh, groups from across Canada are very well connected to water. So that was quite nice. And it was put on by Tourism Niagara. And um, the tourism guide actually played, she played hockey at a very high level. So it was uh, quite a nice tour. We had lunch and um, it was a very good day. And I think that uh, going further that uh, I think we should support this and encourage uh, some of our members to participate, whether it's in the cultural events and the food uh, and whatever we can, I think we should, we should really help them out. And just as a side note, um, uh, Jeff Spencer, I've known him for uh, 20 some odd years uh, being involved with Eastern door in the North. They represented Quebec and uh, he's been involved with it and he was, very positive. So it looks it looks very positive. And I think uh, we will know probably in the next couple of weeks. And that will be held at the first week in, I uh, believe it's in May of 2024. So that was just, just a few highlights. Like I said, a written report will come when a decision is made because there's another uh, group in Saskatchewan that's making a bid. And uh, I just think it'd be very good for our community to be involved. I'm also going to be meeting the CEO of, uh, of Tourism Niagara to push it along a little bit further and also to emphasize our support from Six Nations. And also at the same time, maybe we can develop a rapport with, uh, with Tourism Niagara so that we can you know, have further events or further contacts. And they were very supportive. They were supportive in, in maybe providing uh, venues and other, the, giving park tours, giving park space for our youth to our ceremonies and uh they were they were quite positive to help so that was just uh just the highlights and like i said a written report will follow thanks chief i do do appreciate that uh that uh, work uh, thanks uh, greg for for attending and look forward to uh to the written update 
Are there any questions or comments for Greg's uh, verbal update? Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing them, but I will just by virtue of uh, accepting on the record, I'll look to a mover and seconder to accept Greg's verbal update. Moved by Nathan, seconder. Second, Sherilyn. Seconded by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. So that, that does uh, complete our agenda for this evening of General Council. I will at this point in time look for a mover and seconder for adjournment. Looking to a mover and seconder to adjourn. Moved by Helen, seconder. Oh, seconded by Melba, I believe. All in favor? That's fine. Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Nyawa to everybody for joining us this evening at General Council. Look forward to our next uh, public meeting. Take care.